The following video will concern subjects that are not controversial and will bring up a pseudo-controversial way of looking at it. Real-world harm reductionists. These are people who do the better safe than sorry. Best practices is another word for it. And they're the 90% of the population that just either as a matter of course, or at least sometimes, reduces their risk by doing things. Then we're going to call the 9% after that idealist activists that want to campaign for rules, regulations, and such, and don't ever seem to want to get out of the way of the TV cameras <clears throat> and are always trying to be famous. Then we have the, we'll call them the 0.9%, crazy conspiracy theorist types that <clears throat> inevitably bring up harm reduction where they don't solve anything, a lot like the idealist activists, at all. And sometimes are repeating things that are completely false, but are so ingrained in the subject that they won't listen. And then we get the, the we'll call them the point, the, the point one percent leftover. So we have 99.9 .9 and then, you know, uh, that are the point one percent, which are the scam artists that also repeat the same stuff, <clears throat> but they're not honest people just trying to redu reduce, you know, harm. They're not idealists that are being beguiled by the BS, but being somewhat honest most of the time. They're not the crazy conspiracy theorists that can be given facts, but will ignore it. They're the 0.1% top tier, multi-level marketing style scam artists that are usually lawyers and litigious and fictitious and delicious. So I'm going to do a real simple example here. This is an example that was brought up years ago. Um... 2008 or before, <clears throat> a long time before, what's more safe and effective for shielding you from electromagnetic radiation and electromagnetic fields <clears throat> and whether you can make money off of it? Speakerphone mode that was introduced in, I don't even know which cell phone, a long time ago, so that you're nowhere near the transmitter built into the cell phone. Is that harm reduction? Is it an idealist activist thing or a crazy conspiracy theorist thing where they run around yelling about street lights being death rays? Or the idealist activists that say there ought to be a law and then campaign endlessly even if the law is passed because nothing is ever good enough for them? Or the 0.1% that said everything's lethal, including your toaster? No, I'm not joking about that. What about a long plastic tube that goes from the cell phone to your ear to an earphone plug that's literally just audio and you push it in where the headphone jack would be and then would push in and push the pins out of the way so it disable the speaker and the microphone but it pushes in a little further and goes into a little speaker that it activates because there's no conductivity between these wires here and it feeds it in as audio it's slightly lower than the intensity down here but you can jack up the volume <clears throat> and you use the microphone on the cell phone and you just keep it 18 inches away from your head instead of one inch away from your head because it's on the back of the cell phone. Doesn't matter how thin the cell phone is, we estimate it one inch. Okay? That's a one inch to 18 inch. Every time you double that one inch, you reduce it, you know, square cube law or whatever. Here we go. <laughs> uh, what about it plugging in instead of that into your headphones? Just make one yourself out of a, a dead earphone earbud. Just take out the parts and use this as an audio scoop for it to feed into your ear. What about using a uh, Bluetooth headset, which has much, much less energy needed to be used for radio signals rather than the back of your cell phone? Remember, the entire body of the cell phone, the screen, which has conductive material in it, all of this has the effect of blocking the signal from that antenna on the back. And in the old days, it was a wire whip antenna. Now it's a, um, a fractal a snowflake antenna kind of thing. It's pattern on the back. What about using just the headphone cable and putting an RF bead at the headphone plug? You wrap it around in a circle like this, and then right where it does this loop here on the top there, you put an, a radio frequency bead that keeps it from being able to send a radio signal along it. It reduces it down like hundreds of times. <coughs> Or just use a conventional shielded cable for the microphone and a conventional twisted pair wire for the headphones and the bead, which is the uh, uh, the audiophile version of the headphones. It's literally it. It's also much stronger. They don't rip out as much. 
These things are kind of annoying and cumbersome, but they're really, really cheap. And that bead would make them a, a lot less radio signal than a Bluetooth, but not less than this plastic tubing that was used originally in the 1800s for hearing aids. They're also still used to hide that you have a hearing ear feed in if you're a security person. You see them in the TV shows all the time. <clears throat> or you could use um, multi-dimensional quantum harmonizing transversal field longitudinal wave neutralization MRET molecular resonant effect technology Biotron Biopro chips for automotive and cell phone usage and again toasters by a company that also made Bioneutronic and Bioproduce smoothies in a multi-level marketing scheme run primarily by people who claimed at one time to be lawyers <clears throat> who would sue the crap out of you for giving a negative review. See also negative reviews that happened within a year when they all figured out that you can't sue people into shutting up. They're just going to yell louder. Barbara Streisand never occurred to them. Let's talk about absorption and attenuation and blocking in meat. You. <clears throat> <clears throat> High electrical permeativity materials absorb and block microwaves. That's the idea of putting a shield in your pocket and then putting the cell phone on the outside of the shield and then running that or just using speakerphone and using the air gap. Lower microwave frequencies allow a deeper heating effect for industrial microwaves because lower frequencies go deeper. Higher frequencies can't get through stuff. It's not the other way around. It's literally, that's reality. That's what you find when you actually do these tests since the 70s, since before cell phones existed. If you believe in some conspiracy based on money or whatever, you'd have to go back very, very far, and you'd still find nothing but the same answers. The higher frequency, the less deep it can go. <clears throat> the 12-centimeter wavelength microwave radiation dielectric energy absorption polar molecule-based rotation inducing thermal energy in an oven acts on the outer 25 to 38 millimeters or under 1.5 inches of depth if you're using 2.45 gigahertz in 2006, when people would say this was what cell phones were doing. That was only used in China, maybe. 2006 version of the articles on the subject show that that, that frequency grouping that people said was exactly the same as a microwave oven was not being used in North America much at all. So, I mean, for cell phones at least. So, but that's what they want you to think. No, no, no. Caps locking and pounding being the 0.9% here of crazy people that we don't, we're not going to listen to because you were duped by that 0.1% of the hucksters doing snake oil. They created a fake problem, produced a fake product to cure it, and made a bunch of money. Instead of selling earphone tubes to eliminate the problem, they made that product, and then this company decided to put out something stupid. Well, let's go on. <clears throat> and yes, this is the company. Apparently, I've narrowed it down. This is the company that created that, that viral meme image of the before and after view of what happens if you use a cell phone for 15 minutes but the pictures are swapped, so the one that's hotter was before the cell phone. And then you have to sit there and say, yeah, but, and then there isn't any yeah, but. They lied. <clears throat> I already did a video on it. Let's move on. High electric permittivity materials. Lower microwave frequencies go deeper. Now we move on to the 12 centimeter wavelength and what it really does to meet. And again, in China, maybe you'd find a cell phone doing this. And they stopped using it because, guess what? If it affects water molecules, <clears throat> which is what everybody thinks is some sort of magic resonant frequency, it isn't. It's not the same wavelength. This is the wavelength we're talking about. Water molecules are much smaller. Water and fog would screw up the signals. And at the time, they wanted, to, they wanted fewer towers and put them further apart. Now it's the other way around. So that they don't have to use those frequencies, so let's move on. At 2,450 megahertz, or 2.45 gigahertz, dielectric constants for tissues. Skin and muscle at 0.2 centimeters thick. 0.2 centimeters, 2 millimeters. Or 20, no, it's 2, two millimeters, sorry. Is a value of 42. <clears throat> and for fat, it's 5 if it's 3 centimeters thick. The dielectric resistivity of the same skin 
and muscle is 0.6 and it's 8 for that same layer of fat. Combining them together, let the forces combine, um, you find that just the 0.1 centimeter thick or 1 millimeter thick skin layer is highly effective at blocking 60 to 98 percent of RF frequency at microwave signal at a depth of one centimeter in deeper. It's mainly the skin layer. The other way around for fat layer, you want it three centimeters, yeah, thick. Thick. So anyway, to review, a millimeter of skin blocks, yes, blocks 98% of the RF at the frequency we're talking about. In 2006, when people kept repeating it's the same as a microwave, when it wasn't. But even if it was, it was still that. And again, if it's a lower frequency, it goes in deeper. And then, well, that, that's supposed to be the frequency they're doing because they need it to be a threat when they're selling you a product. So what would happen to somebody who was being beguiled and lied to by the salespeople? They would keep repeating that. Okay, that's a valid argument. So why did the same company that had a product that wasn't magic mushroom bullshit, but actually would work exactly as advertised, a simple air gap like a speakerphone but using it for private hearing by having an air tube uh, an audio feed tube like you would for old style over the ear or in a pocket hearing aids in the 1970s why did they avoid that and sell you something for oh well, that's right they sold it for like 80 bucks instead of 10 and uh, it did nothing well, that's you Waptech. no no that's the opinion of one of the people who used to promote the product 2008, April 2nd, open letter, critique of BioPro and others from the EducateYourself.org website. Dr. George Carlo of the Safe Wireless Initiative in Washington, D.C., you know, one of the people that promoted fear-mongering at one time about cell phones, and maybe even today, who knows, stated that in 2005, Igor Smirnoff, BioPro, and MRET Technology in general were presented to him and the uh, Safe Wireless Initiative out of Washington, D.C., using fabricated science data to leverage and sell its wares and to gain a working alliance with their group. <clears throat> we did not make it a priority to perform a proper due diligence with independent testing. You mean your job? We took it and BioPro and Smirnoff at their word and at face value. After we completed independent testing and evaluation, there was no doubt that the BioPro technology and by nature, MRET and Igor, do nothing of what they claim. The alliance with BioPro was severed, etc. BioPro and the others, yeah. Please accept my sincerest apology for any harm this misrep misrepresentation has caused you. It was indeed one of my most regrettable professional mistakes, I deeply regret the misleading message that is portrayed in a video that is now of a life of its own on the internet. It went viral. It's propagated by a BioPro people trying to sell products that have no independent scientific support, which apparently was important to this person at the time, and probably still is. Their pyramid-type business dreams, instead of schemes, <clears throat> notwithstanding. Now, that's an abbreviated version of, their, of the letter from the person. You can go read it. I've archived it, so it will not go away. Next, you can look up the 1972 Twinbrook Research Laboratory Microwave Energy Absorption and Tissue Report, page 21, and before. <clears throat> you can look up microwave ovens and principles and how they work and all the other data I'm quoting. You can also look up my previous video, Thermographic Head Images Lacking Citation, Source, and Reference, or explaining the color correlation in a thermograph that had nothing to do with cell phones, because again, to put them in the wrong order, the hotter image was the before image, not the after. Why did I do this video? If you're that percentage that keeps repeating things in the comment section based on stuff that's been debunked by a majority of the people involved in science, you were lied to and scammed. And you keep promoting stuff that, in some cases, is from a company that went out of business so long ago, I have no problem saying the word fraud and the company name at the same time. Because they sue the crap out of you for reviewing their products. The stuff's still available on Amazon. It's sold much cheaper, I hope. And it's sold mostly because it's just something that someone got stuck with because it was a multi-level scheme selling basically plastic chunks of chips. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck.